Today I'm going to be taking a look at a couple NAS cases, the brand new John's Bow N4, and this weird one called the Sagittarius. I don't know why it's called that. It's available on AliExpress. The John's Bow N4 is available everywhere. Newegg, Amazon, AliExpress. I also have an N2 here. That's the first NAS case I got from them. I never had an N1. I really like the N2. I don't have the N3 anymore. I had an N3. I had it for filming and then I sold it off. What makes these two interesting is that they both take MATX motherboards. However, they're the John's bow is a little bit misleading. It's not really eight drives. It says it's an eight bay NAS, but it's six three and a half inch drives and two two and a half inch drives, which is really weird. I guess it's good if you need caching. Other than that, it's kind of a weird choice. And as we'll get into it, not all the bays are hot swap. The Sagittarius is all metal. It's pretty cheap, thin metal. It's good enough. And it's eight proper bays that are all hot swappable. And its big advantage is that it takes full height cards, has room for, you know, kind of a decent sized video card, and it uses quad 120 millimeter fans. So you can actually run them slowly and have it nice and quiet. Plus you can see there's tons of airflow in it. The John's bow is kind of restrictive. It uses a single 120 millimeter fan. I think it's going to cook two of those drives. The N2 I'm not really reviewing. It's mostly for scale. I do have a video on it. It's up there. Also, the N3 video is up there at some point if I remember to put them in, but the uh, N2 I actually use for a really weird specific use case. It's a five bay NAS and I use it for my fire safe. It actually fits inside my fire safe. So I pull it out, I plug it into my uh, network and it's running true NAS and it just replicates and then I put it back in the fire safe. It's not something I really recommend because it's kind of insane, but eh, it works for me. Around back you can really start to see the differences between the two models. This one's a bit taller. It's actually a bit shorter in depth, but they're roughly the same footprint. This one's just a bit taller. The John's bow takes an SFX power supply, not an SFX L, just take regular SFX power supply, half height cards, MATX motherboard. On the Sagittarius, you get a full height set of cards. You get the same MATX motherboard, proper ATX power supply. And like I said, 120 millimeter fans everywhere. So it's a dual chamber design. There's two fans cooling the hard drives and two fans cooling everything else. Going into detail on this case, USB-A, USB-C on the front, both five gigabit, I think. I don't think they're actually 10 gigabit. It uses the uh, USB 3.0 connector instead of the USB type C connector. The front panel just pops off with some magnets. And here are all the drive bays. And as you can see, simple non caddy caddy. You just put on the little rubber grommets and this little pull piece, which I actually really like the design of. I think it's a better design than the, uh, the John's bow ones. It has the added benefit of having like a nice pull tab to pull out and uh, when these are all installed, they press against the front so they don't like, they can't like slide forward as easily. So I like the design of that. It's really simple and it's cheap. These are a little kind of rough on the back, like they didn't, the, the metal's a bit rough. A lot of the metal in this case is a bit rough. You can really tell it's a much cheaper case, but honestly, there's no plastic in it, unlike the John's bow. I, I kind of put them around the same build quality. By the way, all the drives are SAS compatible. The sides of the case just come off with four Phillips screws. This side really doesn't have that much. It's just the back planes and the 120 millimeter fans that are cooling the drives. Unfortunately, it doesn't use like a high density connector. They're just serial ATA connectors. I wish more companies would put proper backplane connectors on them. What are you gonna do? No one seems to do it except for people who are doing like proper backplanes like uh, 45 drives marks from either the uh, laser cutting or possible rust. I think it's laser cutting. I threw some fan guards on this. I don't think you really need it because there's actually quite a bit of space and you could cable tie this so that it wasn't, it's not in the way. I just happened to do it just because I'm not going to be there. I don't want my dad to have to like disassemble the case and or, or at least make it easier to service if he has to. The back planes run off two Molex connectors per back plane. There's two separate four port 
back planes. Uh, they seem to be pretty reliable. They work so far. We'll see how they are in the field. Hopefully they don't die because I won't be there to fix it. It does seem like they're a pretty good design. They have screws on every single uh, drive bay so that the back plane is not likely to bulge out when you're trying to install a drive. Awesome airflow. I mean, you can just tell. Big perforations on both the front and the back. This chamber is pure airflow. 120 millimeter fans. It's great. I mean, this is like optimal home lab cooling. Yes, you can cool hard drives with 40 millimeter fans, but they have to be going 20,000 RPM. This, you can run them slowly. One thing I'm not sure about is it looks like this is about a 15 millimeter spacing. So I think you might be able to put a 240 millimeter rad in here. It might be limited to AIOs and it might be limited to a small one. You might be able to do it. I can't say for certain I don't have a 240 AIO that I can test on it and I don't have time to. The motherboard side has perforations here. You can actually attach a fan here. If you want to put a fan over the PCI Express cards, you can actually do it. A 120 millimeter fan won't fit because the power supply is in the way, unless you use an SFX power supply, which is an option. It might give you some more space in here. A 90 millimeter fan will fit and an 80 millimeter fan, although you have to like angle it ever so slightly and you can only use two screws, but the grid spacing allows you to get away with those. On to the chaos inside. As you can see, there is a giant bundle of cables. Every computer case needs a rat's nest. This is this one. Believe it or not, there's actually space under it. It's kind of just hovering above the motherboard and it's lined up with the power supply. So it does block the fan, but not completely. There's actually airflow underneath it because the CPU is right underneath this. Because the CPU is right underneath this, really limits how big of a cooler you can put on it. I think you can fit the pump of an AIO. I think it depends on the model. It obviously won't support one with like a big LCD on it and all that junk. A pretty slim AIO I think will fit here and you might be able to put in one. Either way, it's clearly not designed to have a CPU intensive workload because a stock AMD cooler, the tiny one, has like a millimeter of clearance. <laughs> So it's like, no go, you can't use it. You can put the fan down and then they'll be pulling on each other. <laughs> I put this fan up and you have the, the venting here. It's kind of restrictive. It doesn't completely open up the fan, but honestly, I mean, this is an 860 watt power supply. It is completely overkill for this, but even a lower wattage power supply, I, I don't think it'll have a problem pulling in enough air. You can put an SFX power supply in here. You can get an adapter bracket and just put in a smaller power supply. I think that's definitely an option. And when you're going for like a quality power supply, they're, they're basically like the same price. Like the Corsair 750 watt ones, a little under $200. And so was this uh, 860. Both the Corsair and this Fractal Design uh, Ion Plus are both platinum power supplies. Yeah, you can kind of take your pick. I, you know, if I was building this fresh, I just happen to have a power supply already. If I was building this fresh, I think I would put in an SFX power supply in it. it. Depending on your budget, it might be worth doing custom cables. Depends on how nice you want it to look. I've attached a Corsair Commander Pro because I want the ability to remotely just set the speeds on the fans and just forget it. I'll let the CPU fan do its own thing. I need to be able to adjust the fan speeds remotely for my dad. Got an ASRO Steel Legend B550M motherboard in here. It's a pretty basic motherboard. I just got it because it supports two M.2 drives and two and a half gig ethernet. Those are my requirements. Also, it supports ECC memory if you have a compatible processor. Right now, it's got a 5600G in it. 5600Gs do not support ECC memory, but I will be pulling it out when I get there and swapping it with a 5650 Pro G, which does support ECC. So I'm gonna take the power supply out so you can actually see what's going on underneath the cable mess. All right, with the power supply out of the way, you can actually see the whole motherboard. <laughs> Finally, I've got an LSI 9300 in here, eight port. The good news about MATX boards is that you can get them with eight SATA ports. So you don't actually need a RAID controller. I'm using it because one, I have a SAS drive that I have to put in. They're not all SATA. And two, I just kind of want the reliability of these like nicer cables and stuff. So, and just simplicity instead of running a million SATA cables everywhere. A cutout down here and a cutout up here to run cables from the other compartment. It's not a particularly big cutout. It's enough to get all the cables through. You really don't need much. It's just the SATA cables and your power. 
and that's it, and fan. So as you can see, I'm using a low profile Noctua cooler. Again, if you use an SFX power supply, it'll probably get you a bit more height and you can probably just use a stock cooler in that situation. In this particular case, the CPU load is really just SSH connections. So it's not really doing much at all. The case does come with these stick on filters. I don't think they are worth putting on at all because they are gonna restrict your airflow so much. And the perforations on this are already like a pretty decent size. Small dust will get through, but like cat fur and stuff will stop. I don't really care. I'd rather just dust out the computer every once in a while than uh, have these really restrictive filters on it that just stick on. This particular motherboard only has six SATA ports, but since I'm not using them for this particular build, it doesn't really matter. I'd just like to point out that these are angled SATA ports. And because of that, if you try and run a SATA cable into there it's not going to work you need to pick up some of these double sata adapters that you can just plug in and it just makes it upright which is pretty cool you have to pick up two of them because there's four ports that'll at least let you plug in just regular sata cables there is not enough clearance to do that and have the sata cables come up if you want to do that you also need to account for getting a 15 millimeter thick fan you can't put a normal 25 millimeter thick fan here it will not you'll just not have enough room. You have to go with the smaller fan here and the adapters if you want to use these right angle SATA plugs. All right, I have finished building a NAS in this, did some testing, took it all apart, and uh, I don't know how to say this other than I'm sure somewhere there is someone whom this is the perfect NAS. It has six three and a half inch drives and two two and a half inch drives for caches and it's perfect i just don't see any possible way i could ever recommend it to anyone i mean compared to the sagittarius unless you're really concerned about size like you're just like at the limits of size it's worse in every way i i'd even like building in it <laughs> to be honest the n2 i didn't use the n1 the N2, the N3 were both good cases. They had their little quirks, but they were good. This one, I don't know what they were thinking. Why Why are half the drives hot swappable? I see why they did two and a half inch at the bottom so they can make room for the SFX power supply. But then again, you're picking the size of the case. You can just make it bigger if you need to so that you can fit the damn power supply. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, I, I didn't, like really didn't even enjoy building in it because like it's really cramped. Installing the back piece with the power supply it like tended to disconnect the SATA drives or start pushing these drives forward because there's no back plane that you're just pushing on the wires I did drop a screwdriver on it and hurt the wood but that's not its fault when the power supply gets installed it just put all you have all this cabling you have the motherboard power everything coming off it and it just crams everything in there and this is using a SFX power supply. The cables are already really short. It's, it just wasn't fun to build in. If you look at the N3 and the N4, the N3 I can see because it, it's not a bad case. If, as long as you're okay with ITX, it's fine. If you're looking for something that can do stuff, like you want CPU power, that's why you need the MATX board so you can have like a GPU in it and stuff and run VMs and whatever you want. Why are you limiting yourself to half height cards? When I tested this, I loaded it up with three terabyte drives in a cool room. I mean, it's not summer yet, it's still spring. In a cool room with the window open, the drives were at over 40 degrees which to me is completely unacceptable and that's with the fan at full if it can't keep them at a reasonable temperature now in the summer they're just going to be cooking i don't trust this with the drives especially the ones on this side the two drives here the ssd should stay cool but the drives here are going to cook when you can take the n3 or the n4 that you know 175 ish price point if you take that and you buy a sagittarius for around 175 200 with shipping give or take. You're getting eight drives. You're getting four 120 millimeter fans for way better cooling. And they're quiet because you get so much cooling, you can just slow them down. You're also getting eight drives and you also get two two and a half inch drives. I never even tested the mounts, but there are screw mounts for two two and a half inch drives in the Sagittarius. So you can have eight plus two instead of six plus two, and still get the better cooling, and get full height cards. Johnswell has been making nice cases, at least 
the ones I've tried, uh, the TK1, the N2, the N3. This seems like it should be the N1. It should be the, the one that has all these weird kinks in it that you need to iron out for the second model. Because I don't know, honestly, I don't know what they were thinking. It seems like they just went, take an N3, or take an N2 and an N3, and kind of merge them together and make it MT MATX. I, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me. The The only thing is, is that the CPU space on the Sagittarius is really limited if you're using a full-size ATX power supply. Like I said earlier, you can just swap in a TF... Uh, SFX power supply and use a little adapter bracket to get a little bit more height. I honestly don't know what the point of this case is, <laughs> and uh, I cannot recommend it. The uh, Sagittarius is really good. The N2 and the N3 are both really good. They have, you know, their little quirks, but they're they're good. Just as a final note, they put all this nice wood on the front, and they made this plastic look so bad. It looks so much worse than the N2. <laughs> I don't know how they managed to make this worse. It looks so look really nice nice button you know USB-C everything up here all the wood and then down here it just looks so cheap and crappy but I mean yeah the Sagittarius looks pretty cheap too but this just screams just cheap to me at least the Sagittarius is metal